Hey everyone, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Browser's Inspect Element tool to edit web pages. Learning how to use a browser's inspect element tool is a powerful ability. It's an invaluable learning tool, one that's right under your fingertips and always accessible. With the inspect element feature, you get to see the website's inner workings, seeing front end markups such as HTML, CSS, and sometimes JavaScript. It gives you a way to see precisely how the developers built a website. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use the inspect element tool and some of the related technologies, features, and functionality you'll come across. If you use it, make sure to share what features you like and use the most in the comments below. But before we get too far, I wanna let you know that there'll be links to more resources in the video's description. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. So, let's get started. The Inspect Element tool is much more than a way to display code. There are often several panels to access. Inspector. This is called Elements in some browsers. It's the main screen in the Inspect Element tool and shows you the page code along with element-specific CSS. Console. This is a front-end warning log for a site, and it's a place you can also enter code snippets to perform a quick code test. Network. Here, you'll see the requests made to and from a server, such as all post and get requests. Performance. There's a dedicated tool to help you gauge some essential site metrics. Some browsers do better than others here. Memory. This panel lets you see how a site uses memory, and again, some browsers offer extensive metrics. Application. Within this panel, you can see a whole range of information on the site's cache, background services, and more. On top of this, there are more panels that you can add. There are simple panels such as media and more complex ones like the JavaScript profiler and the performance monitor. In a nutshell, the Inspect Element tool's name is doing a disservice to all functionality under the hood. It's an immense power and should be central to any web developer's workflow. The good news is that finding the Inspect Element tool is straightforward. In most cases, you'll right click on a page and select Inspect or Inspect Element. By default, it'll open the tool in a split window. It often defaults to the right-hand side, but you can customize this to your liking and even pop the tool out of the window. Of course, you can also access Inspect Element from the browser toolbar or through a keyboard shortcut. The exact location will vary depending on the browser. For example, in Firefox, you'll find the Web Developer Tools when you click on Tools, then Browser Tools menu. In contrast, Brave and other Chromium-based browsers have the Developer Tools option when you click on View, then Developer Menu. The keyboard shortcuts are often similar cross-browser. Command plus Shift plus C. This shortcut makes it quick to bring up the tools you need to work with straight away. If you've never opened the Inspect Element tool before, it's often displayed on the right-hand side of your menu. To change this, click on the traffic light menu in the Inspect Elements toolbar. Here, you can select the side the dock is displayed. Note that Firefox also uses a triple pane view by default, which helps you get as much information in the Inspect Element tool as possible. The primary goal of the Inspect Element tool is in its name, inspecting website elements. To do this, you head to the desired web page and then choose your method of opening the development tools. Once the panel is open, you'll click the arrow that acts as a selector for your desired element. From here, you can hover over any element on the page, and you'll see it highlighted in the Inspector Elements window. It's a simple process, one of the reasons why the Inspect Element tool is so valuable and popular with web developers. The Inspect Element also functions as a device emulator of sorts. In other words, you're able to see how a website looks on a specific device. The options are numerous. This emulator will be great for judging whether your mobile-first strategy or responsive design is accurate and working. It's invaluable and almost more cost-effective than having 200 devices floating around your desk. You'll often access device emulation from a small icon somewhere on the Inspect Element panel. Clicking this icon will display your site as it looks on the device you've selected. This is a rock-solid way of making your designs consistent across devices. The Inspect Element tool can also help you judge the speed and performance of a website through the Performance panel. This feature works by recording the loading times of specific elements and scripts. Chromium-based browsers perform brilliantly at offering this information. You'll record the page as it loads and then view the results in a timeline format. You're also able to see a summary of the performance testing within a few other tabs. For example, you can view a call tree, an overall summary, and an event log. 
We've already talked about how the Inspect Element tool is more powerful than it may appear to be at first glance. Let's take a look at some tricks and tips to get the best out of its feature set, starting with the basics. So far, we've only touched on the concept of using the Inspect Element tool to make temporary changes to a site. Let's discuss how to do this in more detail. The steps are straightforward. First, use the arrow icon to select your chosen element. Then use an overlay that highlights the various components as you hover over them. Once you get to your desired element, you can double click almost anywhere you see a tag within the elements panel and type in a change. For example, we want to change the original hero text on the Kinsta homepage to something different. You can also work with CSS in the same way as HTML. For example, take this call to action button on the Kinsta homepage. If you select the button using the pointer, you can see its related CSS on the right-hand styles panel. As with HTML elements, you can change values and add your CSS in too. Of course, for elements such as buttons, you may want to work with its various states. In this case, the hover state is worth changing too. To do this, click the hover link in the style panel. Choosing this will bring up a list of element states, and you can select those you want to see the hover state CSS for. The web page will show how the state looks without you having to act. Here, we've changed the hover colors to differentiate it from the default button state. You can even take image URLs and swap them out for others. On the Kinsta homepage, we show a screenshot of the My Kinsta dashboard. Through locating the element and changing the source URL of the image, you're able to test out other pictures in its place. As you'd expect, these changes aren't permanent, and with a quick refresh of the page, you can get things back to normal. As an alternative, you can also copy the HTML and CSS over to your editor and include them in your code to make those changes permanent. It could be that before you can alter an element, you need to find it. The Inspect Element tool has straightforward search functionality that can help you find an aspect of a web page. That said, it's tough to find it if you don't know where to look. The official way in Chromium-based browsers is to head to the traffic light menu on the right-hand side of the page and select the search option. Using this will open the console panel along with a search tab. From here, type your desired tag into the text box and you'll see a list of associated elements on the page. Note that in the other browsers, you may find the functionality elsewhere. For example, Firefox includes a search box at the top of its inspector panel. Here's another quick tip. You can carry out recursive expansion of the various nodes and elements by right-clicking within the elements pane and choosing Expand Recursively. If you take a look at the Styles panel, you'll also spot a filter text box. This field lets you filter by CSS properties, making it a great companion to the global search functionality. On the whole, it shouldn't be tough to find what you need with two dedicated filter and search tools. One of the best ways the Inspect Element tool can help you learn more about how CSS properties act upon elements is the Visual Box Model panel. This overview gives you a representation of how a specific box, such as element or div, appears on the screen. In other words, it's an overview of how the margins, padding, border, and content combine to become the section you see on screen. Explaining the complete CSX box model and how it interacts with the web page's HTML is beyond the scope of this video, though Mozilla has a fantastic guide to the ins and outs of the concept. You'll often find the box model panel within the layout or computed sections of the right-hand side of the Inspect Element tool. As with any elements and properties, you can also change the values and settings of a particular box. There will also be a list of other properties to help you position that box, set a Z index, apply float and display settings, and so much more. While working with the box model, you may also benefit from seeing the grid system in play on the page. To do this, take a look at the layout panel. The options you need will be under the grid menu. Clicking your desired display settings and then choosing a relevant overlay will show it on screen, allowing you to make more accurate decisions using the box model to manipulate site elements. They've turned from buzzwords to integrated lexical terms, but responsive and mobile friendly are key web development factors. As such, the Inspect Element tool tackles this facet through a couple of features. In most browsers, the Inspect Element tool will have a mobile device icon along the top toolbar. Safari, however, is different. Instead, there's an enter, exit, responsive design mode toggle in the develop menu. Regardless of how you get there, once you choose the option, the web page will display as though you're viewing it on a smaller device. While Safari only gives you the choice of different Apple devices, other browsers dig in to provide you with the tools you need to design with mobile first principles. For example, you can choose the viewport's orientation as well as which device you'd like to emulate. There are two other interesting features here. First, you can choose an emulated network speed. 
Safari doesn't include any options for this, and Chromium-based browsers offer a small, general choice of network throttling. Firefox does the best here with a decent selection of network choices to pick from. To round things out, you're able to simulate haptic feedback and sensor recognition too. It's the default in Chromium-based browsers, and in Firefox, you have to toggle it on. Firefox falls behind here as Chrome, Brave, and others show your cursor as a small fingertip-like overlay. The functionality isn't perfect for any browser, though it's a reliable way to determine how your site might act on other devices. This sort of testing often falls by the wayside for many web developers. That said, there's no excuse now when browsers offer comprehensive solutions like this. Mozilla has exceptional documentation for Firefox, while Chrome, Brave, Edge, and others share shortcuts. Apple is less helpful with Safari developer shortcuts as there is no defined list within their help pages. Instead, we suggest reading through the official documentation for Safari's developer tools. Web development is no longer just HTML. There are many technologies involved. Even sticking with the holy trinity of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you'll still need to see how a website pulls all of these components together. The Browser's Inspect Element tool is one of the best ways to look under the hood of a website and find out in explicit detail how it works. While it's fantastic as a learning aid, it can also help you test changes to your site and find how it functions on different devices and mobile networks. Do you use the Inspect Element? If so, what are your favorite features? Tell us in the comments below. Kinsta's WordPress hosting can speed up your website by up to 200%, and you'll get 24-7 support from our expert WordPress engineers. Let us show you the Kinsta difference. Try a free demo of our My Kinsta dashboard at demo.kinsta.com. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.